Guys, I think my warnings about buying a plug-in hybrid today might have actually proven to be correct because we've just seen in China that they have upgraded the electric-only range of the most popular plug-in hybrid that they sell in the country from 112 kilometers to 200 kilometers. So I mentioned that if you were to buy a FEV today, you might find it'll be kind of obsolete within less than a year's time because these new models are coming with more than double the range. In some cases, for example, if you compare Xpeng's e-revs to BYD's, well, you're looking at more than four times the range. Even BYD themselves has acknowledged that their plug-in hybrids aren't quite as good as their rivals. And that's part of the reason why their sales have been falling for three straight months. And I'm not talking by 1% either. I'm talking by 20 to 30%. BYD has responded to this their new Song DMI plug-in hybrid has 200 kilometers of range versus 112. But I think the difference could be more than that because the 112 is measured using CLTC. The 200 is NEDC, which is probably a difference of maybe 205 to 210 to 112 kilometers. That's nearly double, not far off it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. There's been quite a few e-revs and plug-in hybrids launched over the past four or five months in China with EV only range of more than 400 kilometers. Charging speeds of 350 to 600 kilowatt. Entirely different technology to what you're seeing in e-revs and FEVs today, or particularly in FEVs in basically in Europe or in Australia. Those vehicles haven't hit our shores yet, but they will soon. Build has confirmed that the 2026 Song LDMI, one of the most popular cars in China, will launch at the end of October. And it's been updated really quickly, guys. This vehicle actually came out, an updated version of this came out, I think about four or five months ago. Yeah. So within if if BYD wasn't responding to customers, I don't know what else you could say because they've done this within four or five months of this, the new version of this car hitting the market. That's a pretty fast response. So kudos to BYD for being able to respond that quickly. The new model has semi-recessed exterior door handles, a column-mounted gear selector, which is common. The Xpeng G6 has it. Um, there's a few cars that have it as well. For example, the Deepul E07 multi-truck I've been driving that has it as well. The new model has pure electric range of 200 kilometers. And it's going to start at a price of around 20,000 US dollars. So the price is pretty similar to the previous model. There are some small changes. The main exterior change is the adoption of semi hidden door handles, and that improves aerodynamics by a few percent. The current model measures 4,780 millimeters in length. So it's very similar length to a Tesla Model Y, but because of the shape of the car, it has a lot less interior space than a Model Y, just to give you some context. But don't get me wrong, this is still a pretty good family car, I think, and it's a pretty good value for money too. So one of the big changes BYD made to this car, they replaced the gear lever with a steering column-mounted shifter, which I think is a good decision. That means there's a redesigned lower dashboard layout, physical function buttons have been rearranged into a single row layout. And I believe, te I believe BYD have also removed the option to rotate their screens from being horizontal to vertical. And the reason is because no one was really using them in the vertical position because it um, isn't really necessary. Now, in the higher grade functions, you can get one of the features that I absolutely love in EVs, seat massage. I think it's great. If you've got good ones in your EV, then it's just such a pleasure to drive with those on. BYD's plug-in hybrid system combines a 1.5 liter gasoline engine with an electric drive motor the engine produces 74 kilowatt. The electric motor delivers up to 160. And this actually is cause for concern. That motor is probably not going to be powerful enough to drive it on EV rate mode alone. You're probably going to get about 140 kilometers of real world EV only range. But it's not going to play out that way, is it? Because if you're driving up a steep hill, or even just driving up a hill on the freeway at say 120 kilometers an hour, then you're going to find the, the petrol motor might jump in a bit. It might um, be needed. And that's a, been a common issue with a lot of plug-in hybrids that um, in fact, a, a report in Europe said most of the plug-in hybrids they tested, and they tested thousands um, of cars, 
Most of them, when they were going up hills, they didn't have quite enough power to get up hills, so the petrol engine would have to kick in. So it's just worth considering how much power the electric only motor actually has. Is that powerful enough for a relatively heavy car? This car will weigh about not far off two and a half thousand kilograms, which is you know, nearly probably about 5,400 pounds. But anyway, like I said, I still think this car is going to be good value for money. Resync Solar is the company that I used. I'll put a link to them in the description below. The previous version of this, right, and the version you can get in international markets, it had 75 kilometers of range. They've upgraded the 75 kilometer range version to 130, nearly doubled it. The other version had 112 kilometers, that's gone to 200. So yeah, nearly double, nearly, nearly double the range. So I think my point of saying it's worth waiting makes sense. Imagine if they did that to an EV. Imagine if you bought a BOD seal and they came out and, you know, in a month's time and said, oh guys, guess what? The BOD seal now has a thousand kilometers of range. It had 500, it's now got a thousand. Or even, you know, even if they didn't do that, imagine if they just increased it by a smaller percentage, 500 to 750, yeah? That would be enough of a difference to make the 500 version seem kind of obsolete. Anyhow, I should mention that this car starts at a pretty, pretty staggeringly low price of $13,980 US dollars. And that's the version that has now 120 kilometers of CLTC EV only range. So I'm going to imagine that BYD will do similar things with all their other plug-in hybrids as well over the coming 12 months. The updated model also has new features, including Dyser C Intelligent Suspension, which is actually a really good suspension system. It's also got a combined total driving range of 1,630 kilometers. And the most expensive version costs only $15,680. The price has actually just been confirmed after I made this video. It was like an hour afterwards. They confirmed the price of the 200 kilometer range version is only 15,000 US dollars. Amazing. I should also mention that it's got um, some other upgrades, including a cold and warm box. So basically a fridge and a heater. It can heat up your food up to 50 degrees Celsius, which is awesome. And the fridge can make it as cold as minus six degrees Celsius. So you can actually freeze things in there. That's cool too. So the combined hybrid fuel consumption is 3.4 liters per 100. Probably real world might be four and a half liters per 100, which is still pretty good. Now, in the first half of this year, BYD sold 70,000 of this vehicle, the Song Pro DMI. But interestingly, they sold a lot more than that last year. A lot more, more than double that. So I, I wonder if that's because of some of the rivals that have come onto the market with more range, with faster charging speeds. Uh, BYD did not mention the charging speed, and there could be a reason for that. I'm going to guess it's around about 50 kilowatt, whereas some of the e-revs I've been looking at and reviewing and talking about recently have charging speeds of between 350 to 600 kilowatt, and they have 800 volt or 900 volt architectures. So while these changes from BYD are great, this is still kind of pitched as more of an affordable market vehicle. It doesn't have that you know high-end tech we're seeing from other companies like Zika and XPeng. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching.